our live. We are 10. <laughs> we are 10. It is the 10th Whitman podcast. Yay. Big day. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi. We are 9 tall. Jimmy. I am 9. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this podcast started off exactly the way I wanted it to. <laughs> Simple straight away. Uh, uh, this week on the po- on the waiting room podcast, we've got Ash from Nadir. Hi, and Jimmy. From <laughs> <Montana>. <laughs> Ash, I'm super excited to be on this podcast. I am tall, and I am small. <laughs> <laughs> Together, we are. Tall, tall. small. <laughs> okay, well, the leg we'll, is not working. We'll, I think we'll lead, that leads us right into what is the, the purpose of the... It is a podcast you're doing? Uh, it's, no. Yeah, no. It's more like YouTube YouTube content, I guess, uh, lifestyle review, random things kind of content. Okay, cool. Yeah. Just basically all the stupid shit that we talk about, just put it into <laughs> form. Correct. <laughs> Making the content. Yeah, no, it's not stupid shit, man. We're making the content. Yeah, yeah you know, exactly. Like, gotta, be, gotta, be, gotta be damn careful now when we're hanging out with Ash and Jamie. Like, everything will be now. Everything is now recorded. I ain't, I ain't got nothing to hide. I ain't got nothing to hide. Yeah. We have we've all we all have everything to hide. Especially on <laughs> bastards. Oh. Uh, so is it gonna be a weekly show, monthly show? What's what's the plans? It's going to be whenever the fuck we feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's uh, no please, plan at the... Please don't, uh, Never. Please don't curse on the show. Shut up the fuck up, Brent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get out of here. Yeah. Don't sell around. Get out of here. Maybe edit yourself out later on. Yeah. <laughs> put a beep. Put a beep. Yeah, I'll bleep. I'll yeah, edit. so it's just... Yeah. Uh, how did you start out? How, oh, when the idea came about, you guys... Uh, Right. All small has been around for quite a long time. I think the idea has been floating around for a very long time, but I think yeah, it just, serious. yeah. But we've only started taking it seriously, I guess, when we went to go for like this fancy ass dinner, and before that, we were like, "Why are we not recording all these stupid things that we do and say?" Because I'm sure <laughs> someone would find it funny besides us, or maybe only yeah. we find it funny. I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll find out, love. Right. <laughs> if you're laughing, it's fine. You enjoy it, it's important. Yeah. Right. Uh, but Ash is not laughing. It's okay. I that's his cat. That's, that's who he is. Yeah. He laughs in his own way, man. Yeah. Right. Correct. He laughs at all. He's he laughing on, he's on the inside. <laughs> he's yeah. laughing on the inside. Later, we got Ash. Hey. Ash, keep it tight, You know, so you're sleeping, he's laughing. Correct. <laughs> audio, audio engineers laugh. <laughs> Yeah, just, uh, pure cynical laugh. <laughs> Can we do that uh, take again? <laughs> so, um, to answer your question, Derek, personally, I I feel that um, goats and papier mache don't match. Uh, you can't put them together when you're making a steak, right, Jimmy? Yeah, I agree. Hundred yeah. percent. Definitely. So, it's, very, it's a very serious yeah. situation. Very, yeah. Very serious it needs to be addressed. But, yeah. but 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 based on your assumption that you know papier mache and goats go well together, I say you're wrong because you're weird, bloody Irish fuck. No, I tend to agree. <laughs> <laughs> what, what happens if you meet a papier mache goat? <laughs> uh, Jimmy <laughs> does that all the time in a pretend. <laughs> <laughs> Brendan, in case you didn't know, uh, is papier, papier mache is. Uh, <laughs> no. Guys, Brendan frozen. No, I'm yeah. just, I'm just assuming that uh, you know, we were talking about um, papier mache goats earlier, and I while I was away, so I don't know. No, I, you were here when we were talking about no, it. No, we're lot, you were luckily here. You, you only just you were here. mentioned it two minutes ago. This is called improvisation, before. Brendan. You're supposed to just join in like crazy. Like you're not supposed to think the crazy. I don't want okay. to. Okay. <laughs> Brendan is learning how to improvise. <laughs> I don't want to. I will not think Ding. of people making goats. See, there's no thinking on his feet with us, boy. He just says they plan everything out. <laughs> Give him a script. Brendan here. needs to learn more chords to improvise. <laughs> oh, no. Shot fired. Shot fired. I'm not even done with A minor yet. Come on. 
come on, lah. Remember, remember, Pinay Jet. Remember, remember, Pinay Jet. Remember, Pinay Jet. Don't be done with the A minor, bro. Improvise, man. Remember, we improvise some jazz. Remember, Pinay Jet is next level, man. Come on. That is the highlight of the day. No call. 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 Yeah, yeah, Derek, you weren't there, man. I I killed Jazz, man. That's why you know Jazz is gone. <laughs> uh, jazz, nice. <laughs> Jeez, that's a new People one. People are going to be yeah. watching this episode. Like, what the fuck is going on? Looks like they looks like didn't prep these guests. Uh, <laughs> these guests don't uh, need prepping. What are you talking about? Uh, what are you talking? <laughs> hey, come on, lah! But we do need, hey, we hey, do need hey, to tell a random yeah. episode, sir. What was the past okay, so, tense of jazz? What's the past tense of jazz? Jaws. <laughs> hey, no, jizz. <laughs> jizz. Ah, lepas mah? Lepas already lah. Apa ni lah? Oh, oh man, good vibes, good vibes. Let's try, let's try rum, rum. Bring this back. I need some sort of fucking sanity. Jimmy, of all times, right. release the song. You gotta talk about it. Yeah, we just released a song called Cabin Fever. Sorry. I'm glad you just wrote the uh, name as well. I just forgot what the name is. Uh, Cabin Fever. We actually wrote this song with a few friends of ours. We were on a charity live stream. Yeah, we told them to tell us what they were doing. During uh, lockdown, and give us random notes, and we'll try and make a song out of it. So they tried to throw Sean's game off by giving us like bad notes, and Sean pulled it off into an actually surprisingly very catchy song. <laughs> so uh... that actually turned out really well. So it's all charity based. Uh, I mean, the video is free for you to watch, but there is a link to Bandcamp where every time you buy a song, it goes straight to the charity, and we double the amount. That has the final total that has been given, nice. so that's the plan, and also Spotify release on 18 September, so that's nice. kind of a new single, I guess, the kind of comeback okay. of volatile. So that means that the, the charity part of it is you have to go online and buy the the the. the yeah, song. you gotta crack. You have to get onto Bandcamp and buy it through them lah. So I know. Yeah. Yeah. We, who I recorded Max with Ash. Uh, recorded. Everyone recorded at home, mixed okay. with Ash. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, technology. Is there an album coming? <laughs> uh, it's on the way. Like, there's just rough sketches of songs, and that's about it. Nothing. It's still stuck in Russia, no. <laughs> Why Who's Russia? Russia? Who's in Russia? <laughs> Russian girls, right? Cheap. <laughs> Volatile <laughs> creativity. Come on, Brendan. Who's in Russia? Russian girls, class. Come on. <laughs> Ruben, Ruben's Dude, yeah, in Russia. USSR. Ruben's Ruben, in Russia. Fly, yeah. Ruben is Asia, Russia. Asia doesn't go to Russia. Asia doesn't go to Russia. Come on. So album next year lah. Hopefully uh, lah. Hopefully. Is That's the album the going to be called Cabin Fever? <laughs> no, the album. It's just a single, unrelated to the album whatsoever. Will that, will that, <laughs> will that single be on the album, or is it the single just for the charity thing? It's just for the charity thing and just okay. for a bit of content. Yeah, it's going to be on Spotify on the eighteenth of September. Yeah. Okay. And uh, based on Cabin Fever, is that what the volatile album is going to sound like? No, the new vol. From what I've heard from the few songs that we've worked on, it's even crazier and more prog than the uh, previous album, which so was just kind of rock. So you're going back in time uh, because the previous album was very eighties. Rock. So yeah. You're, back, you're just going back to seventies rock, prog rock now. Pretty no, much, yeah. Uh, so you're all going back how as how old me and Derek are, lah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> when we were born, you know, we were born a hard prog. Yeah. <laughs> no, we, I, I was born when punk came. Yeah. So. Yeah, I was born in seventy six. Next album, just, next album, punk album, man. Yeah. Yeah. Just started punk. <laughs> yeah. So very prog. Uh. Like nice. Dream Theater meets Yes minus the metal. Yes. Uh, yes wow. <laughs> dream Theater meets Yes without the metal. Without the Dream Theater kind oh, of so metal, so it's all it's riffs gonna be, and. It's gonna be more like Genesis wow. then, by the sounds of it. Yeah. There's not gonna be a lot of. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, how very. Again, how again? Who's playing bass on it? 
me uh, no Raul sorry I <laughs> no the honest thing came out with the first answer <laughs> you played everything yeah. the honest the, the truth came out with the first answer <laughs> yeah. that, was, that, yeah. was a, that was a tester just to see what would, what would happen and it did the new album would just be Sean and I <laughs> Sean and I playing anything for an hour <laughs> that's it that's the whole new album <laughs> oh, good man <laughs> Uh-huh. Don't work too hard making albums, man. Yeah, just do like that, man. Release. I cannot. Release. Sean is incredibly anal about what he puts out. So... Oh, is he? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can ask Ash uh, I mean... how many takes he yeah. takes for some. Ah, so so on. Uh, t- tell me about on on average, like how do you how do you work that way? I mean, in a sense, getting everybody because different styles, right? Of of not not style of music, but different rituals. Like he's been yeah. like be anal. How does that? Yeah. Happen? I've been I've been <laughs> recording people for. I think almost 15 years now and I've recorded sure. all types of characters so <laughs> dealing with someone like let's say Sean who even if there's the slightest of mistakes in the take which is very negligible he still will want to redo it the entire take or, or the mistake the the um, let's say a line or something like yeah. that uh yeah, yeah but when you're dealing with someone like that just 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 let them do it <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah what's true. what's the couple more minutes to do one thing, <clears> you know? Especially when it comes to singing. But sometimes, sometimes you have to reel them in for certain things in the sense like a take might sound great to me, but to him it might not sound great. Uh, then you have a bit of a compromise there. You just talk yeah. to them and tell them why I feel the take is great. But that's basically my job as the producer. It's to to reel everybody in. Within their own creative creativity, you know, so that doesn't go too overboard, um, because with a band like Volatile, especially, there's there's a million and one crazy things that we can just have fun with and just do throughout the whole album. But I think for the previous album called uh, "It's About Art," uh, we managed to come to a nice place where there was equal amount of that commercial element. To the music, but also some craziness involved in the production. Some actual art. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And recording that was quite fun, right? You, like like the whole gang, right? You all travel down to KL. Yeah. Yeah, great. I mean, that's it. You just get tighter. I mean, like as, as you know, I'm sure you make fun of each other. You know, call each other <laughs> names in the car down. Yeah. You know, I mean, but that that's the camaraderie you need. I think that's missing. They all just make fun of Raul, the best player. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's all they do. So, ex band member, I remember JC, you told me about your ex member. Yeah, that was a funny story. Uh... <laughs> 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 okay, Jimmy. <laughs> Poor Raul, <laughs> just getting all the shit. <laughs> Poor Raul. And base, my base is always gonna. That's true. <laughs> like, I mean. And Raul is fine. No. Raul's good bass player. No, Raul is cool. Yeah. He's a good bass yeah. player. Just has some commitment to do. Is Raul watching oh. now? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he will watch it. Like, he will watch it. <laughs> it's okay. Rewind. 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 Nobody, nobody watches this fucking podcast. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Will this will Raul. be the one. This is the one podcast Raul will end up watching. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> poor guy. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, the what, traveling. What has the band been like? Sorry, sorry. Band, yeah, you. Said... No, no. I was <laughs> no, just I gonna said... say the the traveling and all that is is great. <laughs> no, I was uh, gonna. Who, who drives it? Who drives in the band? Who drives in the band? Raul and I, both of us. When okay. we, yeah, Raul and I love earlier in the prior to this album, when we were doing like the EP and stuff like that. Only Raul had a car, and Raul could drive, so it would be all of us in just Raul's car, which was horrible. But then <laughs> he got for him. <laughs> for for him, he used to get really upset with us, and like would be too loud, and Sean's music would be too strange, and stuff like that. <laughs> Wait, but, yeah. but Raul like an uncle anyway. Yeah. What sort of music uh, does Sean listen to? Bit of an uncle, right? Everything. <laughs> Sean listens to everything from Ed Sheeran to Nobody, so you get a, a range of pop to like nonsense music that has nothing makes sense. Yeah, and that would be on a he'll play his favorite playlist on shuffle, so there's no flow oh, to the music, yeah. and it's <laughs> disgusting sometimes. 
Aduh. And what does Raul listen to? Raul just listens to metal most of the time. Metal <laughs> and 80s. That's Raul Dillon in a nutshell. <laughs> No, Jimmy. What I wanted to ask you just now was like, you know, when 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 the band was formed, you guys were all based in Penang and all that, you know. So you guys were meeting up, and then that's where you guys would sit and 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 come up with your creative content. But now, you know, where everybody is just scattered, and then yeah. on top of that, yeah, it's been such a tough year, 2020. So how has it been for the band? We actually haven't done very much besides Cabin Fever. Uh, every time Sean comes down, we make sure. I mean, this is before COVID. Obviously, we make sure we play a show or two, get together, write a couple of songs. Um, but when Sean is not here, it's always like Sean will leave and we'll be like, okay, I'll call you and we'll write music and I'll send you some demo tracks. And then six months later, Sean comes back down and we haven't done anything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's so, just so that. But... He's the one like, that makes sort of like starts things rolling all the time. Yeah, Sean is the actual brains of the band. He It's like Sean will bring all the ideas to the table, and then the rest of us will kind of just piece it together. And then if we can't piece it together, Sean will sit there and write notation, and everybody will just follow what has been written. So Sean is the actual brains behind majority of the music that you hear. Okay. So like, it's quite, yeah. It's quite interesting because he's 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 a great drummer too. So I mean, correct. like you have your own drama, right? So does he correct the drama? It's like, no oh, man, I want to like this, you know? Because he, you know, he's like full fighter, right? When the recording second, yeah. I'm like, keep up. Yeah. The drama, like, fuck, I can do better. I get out of the band, you know? That, that, what does it happen? Like, will he? Yeah, play? Sean, is, Sean is very careful with what he says, so he doesn't just like beat Jordan down or anything. <laughs> But like, yeah. he knows what he wants in the song, and essentially, he makes Jordan play what the main idea of the song is and then after that tells Jordan like okay now you you can put whatever you want for now that you have the structure so Jordan does have some freedom to play with it, but Sean writes songs drums first okay. in his okay. head so he okay. always puts the drums down then everybody else comes around the beside uh, comes around the drum track basically cool. yeah. so he lets Jordan so be Jordan everybody like else that. also <laughs> yeah. does everybody else also have the same freedom with their uh, yeah team? pretty much yeah I mean, it's just you bring what you have, and then Sean will just correct us as we go along. Like, oh, this part needs to be softer, or except for 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 I will. For, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Who's got no freedom except at all? For what? Except for Raul. <laughs> Who's got no freedom at all? Oh no! I love you, man. Uh, we all love you, Raul. Did you ever see this? Uh, love is a strong word. Oh wow! <laughs> wow! <laughs> Thanks, Raul. Yeah, I like you, Raul. Like that's that's going to be the next tall, small topic. Love. <laughs> so, so there, there's different love. buttons, right? On Facebook, there. There's like, there's love. What else? There's I think like, there's here as well. There. The part. <laughs> yeah. I hug you, Raul. I hug you. <laughs> <laughs> Man. So what's your body now at the moment, Jamie? Like, like. Uh, it's basically I'm here. Sean is in Scotland. Everybody else is in Penang. Oh, I'm back again. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Sean's, that's Sean's back in Scotland now. Yeah, he's back in Scotland. He went back two, three weeks ago, I think. Did he have to do a quarantine? Do you know? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think so. He had to do it when he came back here. Okay. But not yeah. when he went back. Yeah. But he's flying like first class, man. There's hardly any people got space next to you. Good time to fly. <laughs> If there's no one in the plane, but you're in co- in economy, I don't think that's first class, though. <laughs> Feels like it. You can you can pretend. Well, I mean, <laughs> just put all this. Everything first class. Yeah, you can be Bruce Wayne. Yeah. <laughs> That would be interesting. Oh, man. <clears throat> It would be interesting. Yeah, man. So, but Ash, hey, how is it yeah. for you, though? Ah. Like in What? terms of like, Look, how has it been for you? Focus a lot more on and, Ash in the second half. Huh? And you know, being a producer, <laughs> being a being a sound engineer. Sorry, Fabian, I I couldn't hear you. Brandon was busy talking. <laughs> Nonsense, <laughs> Brandon. Uh, say that again. Now I was asking you, like, you know, how has it been for you? Like, you know, as a sound engineer, as a producer, working in the studio, full COVID and everything. How has that been for you? <laughs> It's been shit at first. Yeah. Mm. Um, a, a lot of movie projects because I do. The main source of income is actually audio post production. So I do okay. audio post production for film, for TV, and stuff like that. So that was bad for the first two three months. 
but I had I had some spillover from the uh, beginning of the year, and then so it's just surviving on that. But <clears> then <throat> I think prior, uh, yeah, two months ago, it started getting better, and now the film industry has opened up. So that has essentially opened up my work too. Yeah. So yeah, I'm doing. I just finished the film for um, Gavin Yap. A couple of other movies, some short films, and also we just finished composing an Argentinian film. You mm. finally got that one done. Okay. Sorry, you finally got that one done. Yeah, we we finished the music for it. Uh, we composed for it, Santosh, and we that that is that's a pretty good movie. Can't wait for that to come out. The trailer's out already, lah. So <coughs> watch what's that. But, what's um, what, yeah, what's the name, man? Sangre, S A N G R E. Okay, Sangre. Vur Vurdalak, V U R D A L A K. Oh, what's the story about, man? It's uh, it's essentially about a vampire, but you only see the vampire maybe two or three times throughout the movie. It's more a story about the family. Um, it's a family drama rather than a a vampire horror movie. The vampire is like the is like an, an a secondary kind of uh, back plot, so it's actually really cool because the um, it's a story about this family who are locked in, uh, kind of like quarantine because the father has to go out to hunt for that vampire, uh, and the father tells the family, "Don't let me back if I come back at night because I could have I could already have turned right and I am, but he comes back." In the morning, but there's no sun, right? So the family doesn't know whether he's already turned. So there's this like very like mystery kind of who done it element that happens there throughout the second wow. and third act of the film. So that's really cool. So the music for it also the director, um, he's an Argentinian guy. He didn't want your typical horror movie soundtrack. So industrial metal. They approached, Dust. yeah. So they approached <laughs> us to. To put out a soundtrack for it and music for the film that's very like off the beaten track and it's very different. You hear you hear sitars in an Argentinian horror film, and you hear all sorts of nadirized music that's in it, lah. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> it gives a good juxtaposition yeah. of the actual yeah. what what people are what people yeah. would expect from a. From a vampire film and what they're actually getting. Nice. Yeah, yeah I love this kind of shit, man. So do you do you yeah. have to? Okay, it's good to be playful. Build, it's did you have to build suspense with the your with your music? Yeah, 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 you have to build suspense. And essentially, I what we did with the music was to sort of lessen the burden of the sound designer's job. We took on a lot of the the usual where there would usually be a sound design cue for something. Yeah. We tried to swap that out with music, so we we built the entire score for the film that way. Okay, nice. And yeah, so uh, when it comes out, you should check it out because Santosh did a majority of the work for the composition on that, and he did an amazing job. So sure. I'll I'll share the link with you guys once it's out. But the trailer is out already. Excellent. Nice. Shout out to Santosh. Then why? And we're back with the second half. So <coughs> Fabian, apparently you've got loads of questions to ask Jimmy and I. So go ahead, Fabian. We'll sit back. No, I guess what I wanted to ask is, uh, okay, so you know Jimmy <laughs> has been busy with her band, um, you know, with Volatile, and then they just released uh, this single, uh, Cabin Fever, and then Ash has been busy with his stuff, you know, as a sound engineer, and then he was saying earlier that, you know. Uh, film industry has opened up again, so he's busy with that. So, how do you guys find the time to do tall, small, or small tall? You know, like <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, um, would you like to answer that? <laughs> no, because I I can always find time to do what I want. <laughs> yeah, of course. I, That's words. the way, man. Yeah. I mean, we already hang out quite a lot together, so just why not record? The sessions that we are hanging out together instead of just 
not doing hanging anything out. and staring at me. <laughs> yeah, we just hang out on camera instead <laughs> and then just see what happens, right? So, like, it becomes a productive hanging out, I guess. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's busy, but I think also, like, when you're doing, like, freelance work, it's very seasonal in a sense that, like, you would be busy for, like, a period and then you would be incredibly free for another set of time. So, it's, like, there's that sort of balance, I think, that helps. Mm. Yeah. But you're also very time, busy, right, yeah. Jimmy? You're doing lots uh, of other stuff as well, right? Like your. Uh, yeah, I am actually. Recently, especially like post COVID, maybe like since since I came back from K- maybe a month after coming back from Penang, not sure mm. how long that was, like ju- uh, July ish, I guess. And I picked up doing video work and some graphic stuff and all that and surprisingly quite a lot of work started coming in small stuff and a few jobs on fiverr so that was actually pretty good so ended up being much busier than i thought i would be in these times Hmm. yeah Yeah. and then i got some like recording work with ash and all that so that's also good yeah have you been teaching no zero teaching whatsoever except Mm. sean and that's about the extent of things i've been people i've been teaching Hmm. Sean wants to learn the electric guitar. So he's taking it seriously now because he bought one from his girlfriend. <laughs> he bought one from his girlfriend. Uh, yeah. Nice. <clears throat> his girlfriend plays electric guitar? No, she bought it trying... To, I mean, she can play guitar. They both can play guitar and piano and all that. Girlfriend's also a multi-instrumentalist and can sing... Uh, so I think she just bought the guitar and then she decided she wasn't going to play it anymore and so Sean got it off her. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Where did Ash go? I'm here. Who's that yes. in the background? <laughs> 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 so Ash, how is, how is Nade doing? What's, what's happening with Nade? Nade is good. Uh, we're recording our next album. Uh, we got a couple of shows lined up also. Um, virtual shows, of course. Um, we had a show at Jiao Tim yeah. about a couple of weeks ago. And the whole show is up online also. So that was nice. Got to play again to real people. Uh, and uh, we are also going to be uploading all the videos we did for Music Diary Rumah. So there are five songs there that we'll be uploading as individual songs on YouTube. So more content, I guess, nowadays, I think, in especially in this musical climate, you just have to keep creating content. Content, content, content. Yeah, yeah just content, yeah. content, content. Mm-hmm. Shit, I played my first show also, and it's so weird, man. You know, after so long <laughs> not playing in front of like real audience, and then suddenly you're playing. Yeah. And the audience are like, everybody's like, just like, you know, even they don't know how to react. I'm like, okay, yeah. wow. Yeah. Looks like I got used to just playing in front of the screen suddenly, you know. It's damn good. That was, <laughs> that was a, yeah. that was a good crowd in Tuesday night as well, America. Yeah, or yeah. Tuesday night, that was a good crowd. Correct, correct. Yep, yep. Yeah. Especially with all the SOPs and everything, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, 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 it was fine. Yeah, right fine. Back. yeah. Quite comfortable. I was quite comfortable be there. So, it was. Mm. yep. Nice, nice that like Madekaya is doing stuff again as well. At least there is some music and all that going on because at the moment I don't think there's anywhere else really besides like busking spots and all that that you can go to like an entertainment venue and find music I think Atas right. is trying to start up again as well as, as well yeah I saw they posted something yeah Who is this? Uh, the bee is doing the bee is Atas. doing stuff the uh, beer yeah. the beer doing but the yeah. beard is oh, Bob Bob and Bob Bob yeah. Bob cover stuff right? they're doing oh, yeah. Bobo as well Bobo stuff. reopened yeah. as well yeah Bobo's reopened yeah. oh in fact loads of places room up he's play, having gigs uh, uh, Correct me if I'm wrong. We're happy. Are having gigs, aren't we? Yeah, but they got they got raided, you know, during MCO. Again, so correct. Oh dear. Yeah, so so somebody complained was a noise, <laughs> but we think it's something else. Uh, but nothing. But it's still there, lah. Uh. But you know, but but it was the organizers' fault too. You got MCO. I mean, the way they put it is that, yeah, lah. It's risky, lah. Yeah. Risky. MCO now different, lah. Rumah happy. It's been rumah happy. It's one big rumah. Is it yeah, rumah? That's why right. they're just living up to their. Is it a rumor <laughs> happy gig if it's not rated? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, I want some attention. No? Yeah. <laughs> now we know who's going to be our next guest. Like. We need to get someone from Rumor Happy to come on the show. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I remember when Volta um, first played there, like we were very fortunate to always play in very family friendly venues because we were very young and Sean was like 15 when we first started. So we had to choose carefully where we would perform. Yeah. And then like sometime uh, when Sean was like 18 or 19, we got a gig at Rumah Api. <coughs> and, uh, and like, okay, old in comparison, Api, right? old Rumah Api. Is this Api. old Rumah Api? Yeah. The, yeah. Uh... <coughs> so like in comparison to Soundmaker, what Soundmaker oh. always was, Sorry, is the old room, room up in the one in the kind of back alley? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, near the Palais Police. Yeah. All right. yeah, the no, PlayStation like was just the, the PlayStation was just a bit down the road <laughs> yes, to the right. Yes, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. that's across the road. Yeah, that's yeah. across the road. Yeah. 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 I've been in the. I was in that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I remember, like, we we felt so weird going there because, like, to us, like, a trash venue, like an underground venue, is Soundmaker. That's like the pinning <laughs> home ground of these kind of things, but. <laughs> Like That's growing Penang up, trash, is it? <laughs> Penang trash. Not Penang trash. I mean, like it's just totally underground kind of thing. And then <laughs> don't call it trash. <laughs> I didn't call it trash. I mean, like most of the time we have like death metal and all this kind of shit going on. Not that kind of trash. Can you call death metal but shit. Like, yeah. But 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 you know, some makers above <laughs> ground. Right? Like, some makers is above ground, correct? It's not underground. <laughs> <laughs> so like the third floor. <laughs> is it? It is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Rumah is on the ground. Rumah is on the ground. That's, that's like Rumpi's the original. That's, that's like the original live fact. The first time I tried to go to live fact, me yeah. right now they, for a gig we couldn't find it. I had to phone them up. I go, hey man, where's your, where's your venue? And he goes, oh, yeah. He goes, where are you at? I go, I'm in the Irish bar. He goes, walk down, turn left. You'll see two old men sitting on a sofa outside. <laughs> so I went down. The old guys go, ah, music is it? I go, yeah. He goes upstairs. Yeah. Someone upstairs. I go. What the fuck, guys? How they find you? Uh, they're going, oh, we're on the ground venue. I go, are you trying to make money? He goes, yeah. I go, well, it's trying to make it make it even more easier for you to fucking find. No, we just don't get fucking raid. <laughs> That's it, yeah. But talking about all these spaces, right? Just before coming on the show, I, I, I saw, um, uh, what's his name? <clears throat> Chong posting about Soundmaker. And how the new sound maker can actually fit about 180 to 200. Yeah, that's what I saw as well. Ooh, that's, that's, a, during... that's a good size venue then. Yeah. I've yeah. been there before. It's <clears throat> still just as hard to find as old sound maker. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but they have a really nice space. It's like it's an underground venue that has a garden inside, like an airwell with a garden. No, that's not enough. <laughs> it's yeah. very funny. But I've it's actually... Like puke, la. yeah. At least you've got a place where your puke has, doesn't go to waste. Yeah. <laughs> Fertilizer. But I mean, like... Young is... Very green fat. Yeah, I remember the old Rumah Api came up with a project like that, you know. Remember on their balcony, yeah. they had like this thing where they planted all the plants and you know, if you wanted to go and pee, then you just go and pee there. So that's going to Yeah, be so they're doing waste. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about sustainability, man. We're way ahead. Uh, <laughs> they were way ahead. Uh, I just think they've confused ideas about what punk rock actually was. <laughs> it wasn't about, it wasn't about being cheap and disgusting. <laughs> But remember, Ash, remember last time once we played, uh, when you were playing with, uh, Siapa, huh? remember uh, what, Rockefeller? Ah. Remember, this was like, what you remember? It's like, by then it was like a Mexican town bar, man. It was like, this oh, yeah. bar, man. <laughs> it's like, yeah. <laughs> wow, the drum was broken, you were fixing it. It's like, oh, man, what's yeah. going on? I was like, oh, that's surreal, man. <laughs> that was the, the olden days, the playing Star <laughs> Cafe, so... <laughs> man, I remember uh, watching some of these bands play in like crazy places, unexpected places. The first time I think yeah. I watched Ash perform, he was still with uh, Cats in Love, and then they invited me to come and watch the show, and he was like in a in a Malay like Tom Yum shop. Wait. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, I it was in that. Ampang, Ampang, right? Yeah, no, it was in yeah, Kampung somewhere Medan. in Ampang, Kampung Medan. Medan. Kampung Medan, oh, yeah. Kampung Medan, oh, Kampung Medan, good, good. Really, I play, like, I play Tom Yum yeah. shop. <laughs> they just they 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 somehow organized gigs there, and we were playing there. It was fun. We were playing to a bunch of rumpets or so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Somewhere there's, 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 there's a there's other place in Ampang so kan the what Ampang Jazz gang. So. Ampang Jazz, yeah, so, yeah. Mm, yeah. There, there was also like a kedai kedai makan. There was a, a food court <laughs> and they yes. they set up proper setup man. Full yeah. uh, sound equipment, got lighting, yeah, everything. I'm, I'm, I'm friends, I'm friends crazy, with the guy yeah. who runs Ampang Jazz. But, but, yeah. but super, but, that, but super like, sober. He, he, he's, he's a good guy. <laughs> super sober. Super sober. 
Me, I'm not lah, but the place you know. Super super. <laughs> you find a corner somewhere to unsober. You're going to be super super <laughs> on Ampang Jazz. <laughs> so Ampang, yeah. you're definitely going to be super super there. <clears throat> so Jimmy, yeah, uh, I've all time played uh, Rumabe one time. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, it was a <laughs> very strange situation. Yeah. It was I can't remember. I I know it was something Shanil had invited us for, but I don't remember the lineup. The lineup of who was playing because we didn't know very many people because that was maybe like just one of the first couple of times that we started playing KL, so it's still mm. quite alien to us. But I remember going there and like we were told like, oh, it's a great venue. Like nobody had told us it was an underground venue. We only had heard stuff, but <laughs> when we were told what it was, like the person who was explaining it to us was just like, yeah, it's a great venue. So many bands play there. It's it's amazing. It's like. Uh, you know, it's a little bit dodgy when you go in, but like when you try to get in, but when you go in, it's completely fine. So we were just kind of like, all right. I mean, we were expecting Soundmaker, and we've only kind of been playing Soundmaker post renovation before they moved. Uh, and so we were just we that was the kind of expectation we had, and then we went in, and Sean was just like, "The fuck is going on?" <laughs> and like Sean was like sitting on a chair, and he was pulling the sofa, and he like taking oh, out old so photos. I remember and, the sofa. And the, yeah, and he was just pulling out photos and phones, and he's like, "Why is this in the sofa?" And Sean was just <laughs> <laughs> just like alien in that environment. It was so funny. <laughs> That's so interesting, you guys. And Azmil, well. you remember when ah. Rumah Api used to be red mansion? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I played there. This was like twelve, thirteen years ago, man. Yes, man. That was good. <laughs> what was Wait, red? Wani. Oh, what was red? Times, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. One Back time. in the day, it used to be a singer-songwriter <laughs> playground. Ah, room up. Yeah. Yeah, down, down the Ampang. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Actually, those, those Back in the day, times. you also were a singer-songwriter. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> tell, us, tell us about that. Tell Who us was about Ash was? singer-songwriter. Ashworth. I could hold yeah. a chord. <laughs> could you hold a note? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we played. We played like four songs. Ray and I. We had a show, yeah. and it was boring playing percussion all the time. So I just decided to play second guitar. So we just played uh, four or five songs, and I was just holding chords, lah. Just rhythm, so Ray could do solos and <laughs> sing over it. There you go, man. <laughs> Boring. <laughs> Ash, you were also. I you thought you were singing in Penang, right? You also started performing in Penang, like back then when, when you know all these Penang guys were talking about Ray, Afik, and all. They used to play in like uh, what was that? Masyarakat Penyayang, is it? That no. Um, I started performing when I was fourteen. Uh, I started a band in school. I was in the school pancaragam lah band marching band, uh-huh. but in terms of like music, I started I started a band in high school with uh, Ray and a couple of friends, and um, we were playing covers. We were doing Creed, we were doing Fuel, we were doing um, some like a lot of that nineties two thousands rock kind of stuff. Yeah. Uber Stank lah, Matchbox Twenty, and then we were that, and that band that was just post grunge. Shit. Yeah, and all, <laughs> and and that band was just um just you know just to play to like the commercial crowd. I also had an underground metal band, and we were playing all these underground metal gigs. Is that the one? Gosh, oh, people... no. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is in K. That's in KL. This is in Penang. But you Penang, had a, this you band. Had, you had a metal band, Dasha, that singing. Yeah, not a metal band, just a just a band. <laughs> but um, <laughs> that's a that's a different story. But you were but a master. The one in you? the one in Penang was um, a metal a metal band. We played like uh, new metal and post something whatever they wanted to call it. I can't remember. But um, post hardcore. You know, uh, art art the rock show. Alif, the hmm. photographer. Yeah, no. he was he was in the band with me. So we were bandmates. And um, we played metal gigs with like Coffin Cancer, Seven yeah. Color T-shirt, uh, all this when they came down to Penang. So that was that was really awesome because the underground metal gigs were, was still back in the days where people would throw things at you on stage, um, yeah. whether they liked you or not. It didn't make a difference. They just threw things. They threw bottles. They threw <laughs> cans of beer, you know. Yeah. And we used to make our own flyers and go photo st- go to the Photoshop and the the shop. The you know the 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 
camera shop and go photo stat copies of it and then go walk around Komta, walk around ferry walk around all these places and just put it on cars and pass it to yeah. random people walking by Total and you you like, see like yeah, you see yeah. people's names on the flyers like chromo you know like in that metal sort of devilish <laughs> font <laughs> scroll. Scroll. Just, we, we call the scroll yeah. like looks it yeah, looks like, the looks, like a, looks like a kid got a pen and just went <laughs> Yeah, and people will look at these flyers and go like, uh, I don't think I want to come for this show. <laughs> and then you play a show in Actors Studio Green Hall or something like that. Green Hall! And you'd get, <laughs> yeah, and you get like the drums. Literally, someone will be standing right here and just looking at you playing like... like <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you you literally had no place to move your hands and you had to play like that and yeah. but it was it was great like it was sweaty it was really metal and you basically were covered in everybody else's sweat and moshing is a whole different game there because it's <laughs> such a small venue and they fit like 80 100 people in at sometimes and you finish your show your set and trying to change with the next band is like you're, you're, you're literally stuck together and you're just moving like that and then poop, this guy's the next drummer you know what I mean <laughs> yeah man <laughs> well, yeah. my first gig well, those, are some of, those like are some of the best yeah. those are some of the best gigs you'll ever play though those were great times yeah. like I, we, I did the same thing <laughs> in metal bands back in Ireland like those are fun, shitty wee venues to, we fucking Bobby yeah. band gigs like <laughs> uh, the North, northern, yeah the northern metal scene i mean uh memang lah but the camaraderie is great lah yeah one genre of music where you always have a, a strong bonded unit and everybody gets on well is the metal scene everybody just wants to fucking go mental and enjoy themselves like it's always <laughs> yeah. it is a good scene to be part of like yeah. <laughs> Even the jamming studios, when you look at the them. jamming studios these days, I'm like, you know, it's so nice, everything is so clean. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's just chilling inside, air conditioned and stuff. Yeah. I remember when I was still <laughs> back in Penang, there was this one jamming studio which was at the back of the Fabian, mall, Mega Mall. Fabian, yeah. you are not from <laughs> anyway, Penang though. <laughs> <laughs> you're not from Penang. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're not from Penang. You're not from Penang, bro. <laughs> Island life. Island underground. Island life nah, forever. Yeah. <laughs> Has she been on the other side of the bridge? Yeah, on the other side of the bridge. You're the other, you're the you're the you're, you're, you're the peninsula side of the bridge. Yeah, yeah, the mainland. Okay. And these two fuckers on Is the that a big thing, these two fuckers uh, on the fucking connect. island side. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, okay. The rich kids, like, The rich kids. <laughs> no, the rich we're the poor kids, island, but like. the real deal. Yeah, I was saying that, like the jamming studio, there was this one jamming studio. I'm, I'm quite sure you guys must have heard of it. It was called Gypsy. It was right behind I've, me. I've, I've practiced there a few times. Yeah, bad shit, man. I'm like playing there with a bunch of friends, and then suddenly a bunch of cockroaches suddenly run out from the amp, and I was like, shit. No way, I'm not even stopping. I just ran away with the guitar and then you just plug <laughs> down. <you know? laughs> and I'm like, fuck this, you're killed like cockroaches, and then I'm coming inside again. <laughs> I see. Oh, man. The DC so, was kind of cool. Uh. So, Jimmy, when did you start playing music? Usually, we were supposed to do this at the start of the <laughs> podcast, but now we're doing it at the end. This is Arts About Face, which is great, fantastic. Um. So, I think I started with volatile so like we had a i was in a band that uh my guitar teacher made for us essentially in school and it was like we thought we were all so cool and all that and this was just with some school friends and we wanted to name the band lethal inferno but because we were all so small and so cute <laughs> he had signed us up as little inferno <laughs> so, <laughs> So that was technically my first band. Jimmy, you still are a little inferno. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Short right. now, what to do? Uh, there's love in that statement, though. A lot of love in that statement. <laughs> <laughs> so that was technically where I started playing music. I gave up for a very long time. My parents like forced me to do the piano thing and the guitar thing. And I was like, ew, I don't want to do these things. But uh, when I started taking guitar, then it was like, what? I can play Guns N' Roses. I kind of did the whole classical thing. It was never told I could go and play rock music. And that's kind of... <laughs> what is Brendan? <laughs> I was never told... Continue, Jamie. Please music. continue talking. 
play rock music and so when I knew I could then I started like trying to find people to play in the band after that first band and the first band the first official band was Volatile but the lineup was Antoine my cousin playing drums Sean's sister Amy played bass and I played guitar and sang that was the first version of Volatile Sean was Sean was in the band no Sean was in a different band he was 13 years old or 12 something like that and he was playing at his school thing so we played the same gig uh, because I had just left 10B so we played the same show he was still being Uh, Chinese then yes very much so (laughs) and he was in this band and Anton and I got off stage and he went on to play and the band was just horrible but I mean they were 12 so and they had two guitarists and a drummer and then Sean was singing and we were just like we heard Sean sing and he sang Zombie by the Cranberries and we heard him sing and I looked at at, at Antoine and I was just like this guy is going to join our band because he knows that we are cooler than the rest of those guys <laughs> and then so, yeah, exactly what I told Antoine and then uh, we asked Amy like will your brother want to come and jam with us and so he said yes and then we started playing music and then we ended up getting along really well together and that's kind of where it led off from there so that's the, interesting never knew Amy was part of the band yeah Amy was uh, version one of Volata. <laughs> so if you guys ever have a Wikipedia page, then you know at the part where like previous band members and then Amy tunes. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> In fact, uh, all the sisters have sung with us. Uh, Kim, Kim, the one who is in Ireland now, the older sister, she sang with us one time because Sean forgot that we got into the finals of a competition and he was on a school trip in Nepal and we didn't oh. know about it. <laughs> Until we called him the morning and he wouldn't answer and we asked his, like, this is the morning of the competition and we were like, Sean, Sean, <laughs> why is Sean not answering his phone? So we called his house phone and his mom was like, oh, Sean is in Nepal. He'll only be back later. And we were like, but the competition is today. So like, thank God the, the sister knows the song so well. So she came and sang for us and we ended up winning that competition. And then Sean <laughs> arrives like an hour after and comes in and takes photo. Yeah, he receives the prize with us <laughs> just as he reaches and that was... What a fraud! <laughs> that's a typical Irish yeah, man it's... move. So that's... Oh, that's, that's interesting, yeah. man. That is a typical... Yeah, just that's coming a... and claiming things. That's a typical yeah. Irish man move. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh-huh. no, no, Bren, you're talking about the English, Brendan. You're talking about the English, not the Irish. I'm yeah. talking about all of you! Oh, we're all the same boat, are we? Aye? All those white guys. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Do you want me to start talking about you Indians or what you have fucking done? Hey, uh, so Ash, uh, tell us what other plans you have happening aside from Nade and Tall Small and uh, post production. Is there anything else you're up to? Uh, none that I can talk about right now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, not not uh, who Ash, what Ash? <laughs> not who Ash, what Ash? Yeah. Yes, I said none that I can talk about right now. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, I got a couple of things that we're working on, but still planning. Like, so do we, um, there's a short film that we're doing um, that's probably only going to happen next year. This year is, this year is, is screwed, Gone, essentially. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so, this year is just about trying to get for me it's just trying about get, trying to get jobs for next year um mm-hmm. but aside from that the creative projects that we can always keep planning and stuff but right now i'm just focusing on nadela so we've got the album that we're recording that's going to be another we have about 25 songs that we have to filter down into the album so with looking at a 13 song album again a 30 song album uh, again yeah <laughs> this is like going to be a Nadia trademark is 13 going to be the lucky number for Nadia I don't know maybe either 13 or 10 but definitely not less than 10 not 10 yeah because we I, I don't like making albums with like 4 or 5 songs so if we I'm old school in that sense. If I want to put out an album, I want to put out a lot of songs. Yeah, I understand. Uh, yeah. And yeah. give people their money's worth. Like, you know, if I'm going to be charging people for an album and I'm going to be charging, let's say, like 35 or 40 bucks for an album, I want people to listen to our music for at least an hour, you know? So in that sense, that's what <laughs> we are doing. So 
right now we're just uh, recording all the guides, putting the guides down first. Um, once that is done, then we'll start adding everybody's parts. Um, yeah, and then hopefully by the end of the year or mid next year, the album should be out. Nice. But nice. it's it's gonna take it's gonna take a long time because eight people and we've got to do the whole producing aspect of it. You know, trying out this line and going, nah, this line doesn't work. This line sucks. Let's try something new. Um, and the good thing is we don't have to worry about time or studio time. Um, yeah, everything's done here, so we can we have the luxury of just really taking our time and getting the parts right. So, so who, yeah, who cracks who cracks the whip in a day? Yeah, I suppose it's you because you're producing. <laughs> Good. Yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. Somebody's gonna crack the whip. Not good. <laughs> <laughs> Stop, man! You gotta hurt like you gotta hurt eight people, man. I can't imagine that, man. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Well, seven. But I think yourself, but... it's it's now now it's it's great because I don't need to do any of that anymore because everybody is like pretty much equal in the band. Um, the first year when we first started. Yeah, I mean, you can imagine like you're 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 coming on and trying to to realize somebody else's vision. It's not yours yet. So yeah. we took that whole first year of the band to make sure that my vision became <clears throat> everybody else's vision. You know what I mean? Yeah. So now everybody has ownership. Didn't... They feel there's ownership. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So everybody else has ownership in the band. But that's everybody good we. We oh, yeah. all treat each other equally, so like, so in that sense, after the first year, that that whole aspect of this is this is my band was no longer just me; it was everybody. So from there, it was just straightforward and easy. That's a ref- well, that's a ref- reflection on you too. Where you had an initial idea, and you you, you give over trust to the other seven members. Mm. Which I mean, like- <coughs> it was that someone. <laughs> Sorry, continue. No, I mean it's 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 easy because the first year, I told everybody to just focus on writing music that you want to write, and with no rules, and leave everything else to me. So that whole first year, I just did everything else, all the, you know, like getting gigs, social media, blah 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 blah, branding, all that. I just did it on the side, and then when we went for rehearsals, oh well, by the way, the first year we didn't play any shows. All we did was just write music and come up with a one hour set that we could perform uh, of original songs that were were essentially like what we felt were perfect and we just did that for a whole solid year and then after that one year then we started getting gigs we started going out and playing and um, I think that really helped build the chemistry between everyone in the band and also just like you know like everybody has equal parts in writing the songs uh, coming up with their own little parts here and there. That's why you get songs like Senja, which is like 10 minutes long because we want to put all those ideas in, right? How do we make it sound like a cohesive song? So that That's what took time. And eventually, we just got it down to a science lot now. <laughs> now we... Senja's a pretty yeah. good example of that. Like Senja's yeah. a very good example of... If, all mm. 300 recordings of it are good examples. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember the first few gigs we played were the gigs uh, where, 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 where Orkes Padu Always stuck in the button, yeah. Jimmy. Just yeah. Stuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you guys grow, man. You guys, that's how you guys grow. Yeah. From, it's all awesome. You yeah. see him becoming this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Such a unique band, man. Very unique band. Thanks. Yeah. Unique band. Mm. Remember that, that gig, uh, Ash, the one at Play Space? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. open for Orkes Baru, man. That place was yeah, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> that, oh man, that was like, I oh, like <laughs> the. <clears throat> it was interesting because it felt like a like a, a proper like venue, but in a yeah. very small space. <clears throat> I can't believe that was even like someone venue, squished you know? it down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Got backstage, come on. You know, I've got backstage. Maybe yeah. I'm, you don't have artist backstage. room, bro. Artist room. Artist room, <laughs> room. Yeah. Like at that place, is, <laughs> like it's, it's perfect for a, for Ruzan Studio. But I, I can't believe it was an actual yeah. music. But I, like one of my yeah, favorite really? bands, is an American man called Sick of It All, played there. I can't believe it was they played there because like it is so wow. small. Like. Sick of it all is Derek's life motto. <laughs> <laughs> 
sick of it all. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I think we'll leave it there, guys. Um, yeah, good, good, good. All right. All right. Podcast. So, yeah. Ash and Jimmy, uh, uh, I think having some of our family members for the 10th uh, podcast was perfect. Sheer utter yeah, gibberish, sweet. but it was really good. Job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was perfect so gibberish. much gibberish. It was perfect gibberish. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so we'll thank you guys for, for being here. Yeah, Lovies. thank you for having Thanks us. For having us. Love you all. Anyway, guys. Yeah. Wait room number 10 over and out. Thanks, guys. <laughs>